This is the plaintiff, Robert Sforza. He says he purchased a truck for his daughter from the defendant, and the louse told him it was in good condition. Two days later, the engine seized up due to an oil problem. He now has a useless truck which needs a new engine, and he's suing this flim-flam truck salesman for the $2,573.59 he's now owed. This is the defendant, Ron. He says the plaintiff has a short fuse, and he never should have sold him this truck. The guy ended up blowing the motor, driving the truck up the biggest mountain in the state, even though the oil light came on. The plaintiff's trying to make him out to be the bad guy, but he did nothing wrong. Sold the truck in good condition and owes nothing. He's accused of trucking things up. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a truck from the defendant and says it seized almost immediately. But the defendant says the plaintiff's a hothead and blew the engine himself. It's the case of you really blew it. Okay, Mr. Sforza, you are suing Ron. You've asked us not to refer to your last name. Ron has brought a posse of people <laughs> uh, for $2,573.59 that you say he owes you for all you are out regarding a lemon that he sold you. Tell me what's going on. Uh, good day, Your Honor. Um, I was referred to Ron uh, that he had a truck for sale. Um, in speaking with Ron, um, he, I believe he misrepresented the reliability of the truck. Um, I did test drive it. I had some concerns. The price started at 24 What year truck was this? It's a 1903 Chevy. 2003 15. Chevy. Oh, I'm sorry, 1903. <laughs> is that what I? 2003 Chevy. 2003 Chevy. Yes. A 2003 Chevy. Yes. 15 uh, years small, old. 162,000 miles. Did you have a mechanic look at it before you bought it? I did not. Okay. Uh, so, and how did you know each other? He is roommates with a friend of mine for 30 years. All right, go on. Um, I did um, trust Ron when he expressed to me that he knew the vehicle, having had worked on it for um, the company that owned it before because he's in the automotive business. Um, he stressed to me that he uses this mechanic that is really reliable and really knows his work, drove it for a total just under 150 miles, and an oil coolant line blew totally seizing the motor. Um, Ron was stressing me that he did the oil coolant line. Um, that he what? He had changed the oil coolant line on the truck. Well, come to find out there's two oil coolant lines. It's hidden underneath a, um, a, a total enclosure under the motor. Come to find out the mechanic that he had been using, um, who was supposed to come look at the truck when the oil line blew, uh, he had taken out a customer's truck or vehicle, smashed it, came back all bloody, ended up in prison. Um, for some reason, I don't know the exact reason why, this was all explained to me by Ron. Um, so I feel that he used a, a very unscrupulous mechanic who'd come to find out Ron's brother mentioned, when you change an oil coolant line, you should change two oil coolant lines, both of them, uh, because he did come. Did you ever take the car to a mechanic? No, I did not. Ever? No, because Ron, um, like, I mean, me, even after it blew, you didn't take it to a mechanic? Where's the car now? It's in a driveway at my boss's property. Um, okay, but you must have taken it to a mechanic that told you Ron, the engine was blown. The defendant told me that. How does he know the engine's blown? Because he came into the testing and, and figured out that it is blown. He Are you put a mechanic? A pry bar. No, I do auto body work, Your Honor. Okay. I'm, we're in court, and nobody has seen to it to have an actual mechanic diagnose and say he, what's wrong? He said he put a, a light on it and tested it and said the motor was seized. He's the one that called me and said the motor was done. He says you're he saying that it. the motor is shot and he needs a new motor. I, Did you tell him he needs a new motor? He seized the motor, Your Honor. Meaning? The light, the oil light came on. I guess he kept driving. He told me he was coming out of work. It was a pouring rain. He was going up Southern Tip Mountain. It's a steep hill. I guess he saw the, the light come on. Then he said he watched the oil pressure gauge go down to zero. He continued to drive the truck. But you're basing your knowledge on whether he continued to drive it after the lights turned on, on what? That's on, what he told me. Well, hey, you, years guys are, ago. you guys are fascinating to me. <laughs> Not one of you has bothered. You, you're gonna take up my time in court 
but you're not worried that the judge might say where's the actual mechanic diagnosing this and figuring out how it happened and why it happened and that it happened. Th those I know things are how it happened because I purchased the oil coolant line. Ron and his brother showed me that the oil coolant line blew. Okay, and who am I supposed to get the answer from that both are supposed to be changed at the same time? You said, well, that's not supposed to happen that way. It's supposed to be both that are changed. That's why the engine seized. Okay, great. And now I need evidence to prove the statement that you just made. So where's what mechanic is saying that here? Unfortunately, Anybody? I don't have him kidding. Right. Say that. Okay. So now what happens? He calls you and he tells you, listen, and you have this connection because your room is it still your roommate? Yes. Is a friend of his for 30 years. I mean, this is so awkward. Yes. Right. It is. I wouldn't have sold it to somebody I know. That makes me very nervous. I, I fr now I just don't even sell cars to anybody I know. I don't sell cars to anybody I don't know. I'm going to ride my horse as long as I can. And when everybody in my family says it's humiliating, I will trade it in. And, you know, the dealership can, can do what they want. I imagine this has to be awkward and stressful. It's very awkward. So if you buy a 15-year-old truck, um, are you allowed to expect that it's going to run well, the engine's going to be good, or are you just taking your chance? I mean, I would expect that you would at least have a sense of what you're doing, but I mean, it's 15 years old, so at the end of the day, it's but do kind you of have, everywhere. But do you have a right to okay. expect that it's going to run okay, or is it just all buyer beware? Buyer beware. So you have no rights if you buy a used truck? Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> Last word. I disagree. You definitely have rights. You should have... Uh... It should go at least five miles before it breaks down. <laughs> I mean, right? Okay, going inside the courtroom. Did he text you the problems or did he tell you the problems? Do you have the text? Can I see the text between you two? Sir? So you're Probably. suing for the money you paid for it, the money you paid for the brake pads, the money you paid for the registration, Here's the money for oil that you put in it, monies for lost wages. What was the day of the purchase? It was right in the beginning. I, I believe it was the seventh. It was a good running truck when I had it. You know, I feel really, really bad, but I don't feel guilty. I didn't do anything wrong. The line blew and he ignored the, the gauges on the dashboard. Can I ask you a question? Total. Um, your position is you sold the car as is, and your position is what on that? He did I, not sell it as is. I have the copy <laughs> of the bill of sale. It does not say as is. Does the bill of sale have a warranty? No, it doesn't. The default position for any sale of a used vehicle in your state and every state is that it is an as-is sale. That's the default position. The only thing that changes that is a specific warranty made to you. When you say, well, I think he misrepresented how good it was, I'm not sure you're really saying that. You're saying that a repair that took place beforehand was done inappropriately, and that's what caused the engine to seize. But you're going to have to prove that, too. Either way. You, as the plaintiff who walk into a court of law, have the burden of proving the case. You have to be able to prove to me, not that the car only lasted 10 days. You can prove that all day long. That you are obviously, that's what happened, and it's terrible. But it's not a new car with a warranty. Correct. It is a used as is sale, even if, even if the bill of sale doesn't say as is, it is by nature of law when it's a 15-year-old car and 162,000 miles, it is an as is sale. That's why it's so important that people pay a couple hundred bucks to a mechanic, or nobody does it. I mean, it's not, I mean, the people who do it, I don't see them, <laughs> right? But you, it's up to you, it's buyer beware in a situation like this, it really is. All right, listen, I read all the text back and forth, okay? And I, I, I feel bad, and <clears throat> you know, it kind of touched me when you text back and forth, I guess you didn't prey on it, and you say, I feel bad, I don't feel guilty, there's a difference, I understand that too. My job is to call it on the law, and on the law, in this contract, when he sells it to you and it's 15 years old, it's as is, and it's buyer beware. And it's really up to you to, to check it out before you buy it. And when you have it for 10 days, even though certainly a used car should last you longer than 10 days, at that point, you've been driving it, you've been taking care of it, you've been doing stuff. So you've got, you've got the beginnings of a case when you're showing me, look, judge, this is what blew. I have to be able to know that, that there's something he lied about or warranted that got violated and that this is why it seized as opposed to other reasons. In other words, there has to be a mechanic here saying, look, judge, this caused X, Y, Z, no matter how long you drive on it with the light. No, I don't have any of that. I have you basically buying a used car 
and wanting to return it, which is, isn't part of the used car sale business. So uh, I have no choice. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff fails to prove his case. You know, Mr. Sephora, there's two things you should have done. Yes, sir. Seen a mechanic and watched the people's court. Yeah. You would have learned a lot, don't you think? Yes. What are you going to do now? The car's still sitting in, inoperable. I can and jump it for 150 bucks. It's a, I really? got to get it out of the parking lot. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. It's it is fixable, lot. though, isn't it? Yeah, I'll probably have to spend another 2000 you know, but mm, I can't afford that. Right. No, sorry about that. Feasible. Really sorry. Thank right. you very much. Now, here comes Ron with his team of moral support. Did they give you a lot of moral support? Because I didn't <laughs> see a lot happening back there. I guess I, it wasn't needed. It, you were just feeling it, right? Yes. Okay, all right. You feel bad? I do. Here. I'm an honest guy. I, 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 it came across. I believe you. You know. Golly, geez. Okay. Well, congratulations. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for your moral support. Thank you. I felt thank it you. too. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Harvey. Okay. I mean, look. Th uh, this is actually a good example where somebody gets in over their skis. Um, if you are outside your zone of knowledge. That is precisely when you need an expert witness to win your case.